Well, good evening. Rob Staten here. Just a few minutes until the Beer World Cup kicks off now. The players are ready and they all look in top shape. Sean's shorts look a little tight, mind. Should be a good game, though. Perfect venue and the crowds have turned up in there. Uh, ones. Uh, looks like we're ready for kickoff. Episode six of the Sheffield Hopcast is go. Hello and welcome to episode six of the Sheffield Hopcast. Uh, we are at Walkley Beer Company, and this is our. Uh, World Cup of Beer or Beer World Cup, whichever way around you want to um, you want to say it. Uh, I'm James, and um, well, first of all, let's go to Sean in his shorts. Uh, Sean, what has been your beer of the month? Not quite tight enough for me, actually. These, but uh, my <laughs> beer of the month uh, is a beer I, I had a couple of days ago. Uh, uh, we've got a customer who has a bar down in uh, Melbourne, uh, uh, Grain and Grape in Australia. And he brought me a, a couple of gifts. One of which I'm, I'm hoping might win tonight's uh, tournament, of course. But one of the bees he brought me was from the States that you don't see much over here in the UK. The brewery's clown shoes, based in Massachusetts. And the uh, beer was called Undead Party Crasher. Um, outstanding American or uh, Imperial Stout. And just full of everything you would want. Chocolate, hot. So there was a bit of a fruity touch to it as well. It was fantastic. Uh, tonight, your countries are Belgium and Australia. Yep, you rank, won, out, rank you, outside. Uh, you, won the, you won the public so vote. You Australia. are officially the favourite. You made yourself your favourite at the end of uh, the last episode. Uh, I, I the did. public agree. <laughs> no pressure. How confident are you feeling? Um, what is now that I know Laura is refereeing the, uh, the opening round, She's also had a soft spot for Adam. Uh, I'm not. I'm not expecting uh, uh, that one to get through. Belgium. I'm quite confident. I would point out it's a blind taste test indeed. I bought an actual blindfold along with me. It's for your beauty sleep. Yeah, Adam will cheat in some in some way to communicate. <laughs> with Laura. Um, Adam, what's been your beer of the month? Uh, mine's come in the last few days. Actually, I, I was sort of panic. I've had some good beers this month. I mean, I've, I've had the can- me and James have had the Cannonball Run this month. Yep. Um, probably his taste buds by that point was a little bit um, mm-hmm. muted um, but mine was um, on cask it was at the Dev Cat it was Turning Point Brew Co and it was Circle Game which is a 6.8% IPA um, James would like to you can't see through it it was quite fruity and, excellent um, I'm, t- I'm turning to these um, slightly New England style ones now I think I'm softening in my Don't old age look at me hazy <laughs> all the way yeah so did you prefer the Neo out of all of the cannonballs as a result uh, of your soft uh, I, uh, approach? My opinion on it is that I don't find it, I don't want to go into but I don't find it part of the cannonball run, but we, I think we all thought it was the easiest to drink and it was a nice change. So did you, did you enjoy that the most? Um, from the third, I did. Did. from the third that we had, I think so. I've got a can in the fridge, and I've got, a, I've got, a, I've got an own cannonball, even to um, drink as well. But, um, yeah. Yeah, I'd have gone Neo favourite, unhuman second favourite, human third favourite. Would be my order. Yeah, you were, you. I've said it on on Twitter, but you said that you were you had the human, and you were a bit like, no, I'm not getting this. And towards the bottom, you were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it got better, it got better. better. I think it's just, the Neo was consistent. I think you're not good. used to these kind of more like old school IPA styles. Yeah, a bit I think you're. You're, you're conditioned to these probably slightly these days, softer yeah. ones so Juicy James your nickname it's Juicy James for, uh, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll take that short, <laughs> from Sean in Shorts um, very tight so you've got uh, you've got England yeah. and Japan, Japan. yeah um, you said the other day you were quietly confident about England um, I think it's going to go one or two ways it's going to go down like a sack of shit <laughs> or, or it's going to be like best beer ever uh, it's a beer that I love and I'm, 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 I was saying on Twitter I'm confident that why are you looking at Laura because it's Laura's Laura. my judge <laughs> and I think Laura's the type of person who will Go laugh for it out shit. it's not it's <laughs> definitely not Carling Light yeah? it's not Carling Light okay. and it's not Bud Light or Bex Blue are they both from supermarket though so? they're not both from supermarket <laughs> <laughs> Laura what's uh, what's been your beer of the month uh, I'm going to pick a beer that I actually brought to uh, 
Mills bottle share that I attended last week. Uh, it's from Iron Fire Brewing, who are based in California. It's a brewery I've not drank anything from before. Um, and it was a uh, grapefruit IPA called Grapefruit 5150. Um, 6.5% it was just so unbelievably grapefruity like really nice pithy bitterness but really sweet really, and nat- fruity. really natural grapefruit yeah. best grapefruit beer I've ever had yeah that. same and it just really stood out and I think even though there was that evening we drank quite a lot of high ABV stuff which tends to do uh, kind of score the most highly across the board but my grapefruit IPA it was up there wasn't well. it yeah um, so uh, I was what does the 5150 yeah. refer to? 5050 is, 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 is an IPA range, so I'm guessing that uh, rather just in a variant of the 5050 with grapefruit and call it 5150. Uh, right. yeah. uh, it's not quite a, by numbers. From a guitarist point of view, I think that yeah, Eddie Van Halen had a, an amplifier range that were called 5150. I think. Did it? Yeah, but we'll just leave that <laughs> so you've got uh, Denmark and Mexico. Now I know you're not overly confident about Mexico. Nope. <laughs> I love <Corona>. Denmark. <laughs> Denmark's a double for isn't it? Yeah, Denmark I enjoyed uh, selecting uh, which beer to bring. Uh, loads of good options there. Um, Mexico options were slim, if I'm being optimistic. Before anybody shouts at me and says, Oh, you're going to have to touch on such a oh, so yeah. Where were you three weeks ago? Oh, you've, you've had a so, month. Yeah, well, yes, and uh, Jim's been in America. <laughs> he has raided so shops easy. in uh, in Michigan for me. That's cheating. No Mexican craft beer over, over there. Oh, so, uh, well, <laughs> we, will, we will see how it does, but uh, Denmark should be good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Russ is with us now. Um, Russ is actually our. Kind of referee tonight. Um, is that Howard Webb? He, yeah, he gets to judge the actual final when we get there uh, to pick the overall winner. So, kind of pressure off in terms of the fact you've not to pick any beer, but pressure mm. on in terms of the fact that you've got to choose the um, the winner. More importantly, what's been your beer of the month? Uh, Beaten It's Republic Citrus Pale, standard name, three point eight percent from Manchester. The brewery is uh, not been out drinking too much myself. Um, so a bit of a cheat having a beer from the place at work. Not going to mention it because we all know where it is. Um, That's what yeah. that to be editing out. After. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, described as citrus notes of grapefruit, orange, lime. Uh, one for all the vegans as well. Uh, unfined and unhazy. Unhazy, it's rather hazy. Can I get a 3.5 on untap though? I'm, uh, yeah, 3.38 it's saying. That's I only got not, it for a... Not good. I only got it for a... a it's uh, all relative, isn't it? A description. Um, did you meet your hand in deadline for us? For, uh, for, for, uh, for university? Oh aye. Good lad. Oh aye. Straight in the drinks afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> was, it, was it one of them? It was, I think. Yeah. Something like that. I thought, but, yeah. I thought you'd gone strong actually there. Yeah, 3.8. 3.8. Oh. <laughs> Every night. <laughs> <laughs> Headaches in morning and that stuff. <laughs> and how are you feeling in terms of the pressure of having to pick the winning beer tonight. Oh, along for the ride. The inaugural first ever winner of the Sheffield Hopcast. I'm on World Cup fever, I've got a sticker book. Yeah? A sticker book? Yeah, yeah. He's got his arms full of time. Got, yeah. a bad body of Fergie, Fergie time, pressure. I go into Fergie time. Have you got the um, Hopcast shiny yet? Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've had that waterproof resin. Yeah. Oh, nice. Got, got need. <laughs> uh, right, my beer of the month, I'm gonna do a couple of honorable mentions as well. Um, Sean will probably know I've got to give an honourable mention to anything by Verdant who I've been a little bit obsessed with this month and have um, yeah, yes. literally swallowed up anything that they've released and I think they've all been great um, I was a beer that I was really pleasantly surprised with was the 8-bit which was the Brewdog 8-way mm. clam which I'm not going to mention yeah. the other people on it because we take up the rest of the time uh, I expected it to be all over the place and I thought it was actually quite a nice balanced beer and I enjoyed that but the one that I'm going to go for is Strangely, this is a beer that I mentioned last month on the Hotcast saying I've got one in the fridge, but I wasn't expecting it to be anything spectacular. And I'm picking it because it's the only beer where I've actually gone out and sought a second can of this month, which I actually bought from here at Walkley Beer Co. a couple of weeks ago over the the Bank Holiday weekend. So um, that is the uh, Magic Rock... I can't remember the name of it. Botany of Desire, is it? The yeah. uh, Honey Double IPA. 
which I thought was absolutely brilliant and just tasted just different to anything that I've had before. But weirdly, like I was waking up in the morning after having it, craving it, thinking, "What a really nice beer!" <laughs> it's called alcohol. Just had such a. <laughs> no, I'm not at that stage yet. <laughs> Um, on your but what such a you come in? <laughs> <laughs> such a really kind of uh, yeah different different beer. So um, yeah, full um, full credit to that one. My countries that I've got tonight are Germany and Spain. Um, I think I think I've been straight. installed That's the World Cup yeah, yeah, I've been ins- installed the second favourite uh, just behind Sean, and actually I was leading the public vote until about I 15, 20 be minutes before. So Ooh, I think you should. Yeah, it was. Sean, it was quite close. a strong leader. The lead, to, uh, so you had a, a it's been big in final the like yeah, contact. Final I mean, we all know that Sean will win this somehow. He <laughs> runs. <laughs> he runs a Get beer lost. shop. He sent someone to Australia. What about to, to bring beers what back about, for him? What about wrapping of the, uh, the bottles? Yeah, so anyone. The, the, there'll be as Easy you listen winner. to this, there will be a video on our social media of the uh, the wrapping. I reckon I win the wrapping easily for yeah. purely for the colour choices. I've gone multicoloured. Everyone else has gone boring. Laura we're, didn't we're, bother oh, until, sorry, no, no. until she turned up. We've, we've all gone Colonel. You've gone Magic <laughs> Colonel. Yeah. You've gone Magic we've got, Yeah, we've got. We've got. I, I thought I, I was being quite clever because my Mexican one looks a bit like. This. You were very really clever because you didn't wrap the <laughs> towel before we got Kate, here. Or I actually or think, <laughs> even though you had to do yours with right, brown paper bags when you got here, I still yeah. think yours are better than Sean's. Bag? Thank you. Because yeah, Sean's got yeah. a bit of his Australian one sticking out of the top. Mine's, I, a, mine's a, a very quick uh, little attempt. Can I actually it's brown paper bag, bag it? it? <laughs> Is it? <laughs> no, From it's chip paper. I tore a little bit off um, Penelope's um, sort of drawing paper that yeah. I think it was Amazon wrapping. Nice. Um, which I had about 20 metres off for like probably a pack of batteries or something. You, so you stole your paper from your daughter? Yeah, the your inside baby that daughter. probably got like sort of really nice drawings of parents on the inside. Yours is of the neatest writing as well, Adam. That, that Japan looks. It doesn't look like the same person's written no, those two things, no, but no, I it genuinely. Is that same before pen. on Human Cannonball and after no. on <laughs> Human Cannonball? No, no, it's. it's Straight up. Right, we need to get warmed up then for uh, for the first round where we uh, one of the seeded beers plays one of the unseeded beers, uh, and each of us takes our turn judging it blindfolded. Um, and as and when a beer gets knocked out, we will unwrap it uh, to reveal what it is, and we'll all try it and discuss it. Before we get into it, let's first of all meet our hosts tonight here at Walkley Beer Co. I'm Nick, work at Walkley Beer Co. Been here for, I've been here for two years, business been here for about three and a half years. Hello, I'm Lucy from Walkley Beer Co. and I joined in January. So just for people who have never, never been here before or don't know about it, can you just tell us a little bit about the history about yourselves and how you're involved in this company and a little bit about Walkley Beer Co. Sure, uh, it was started by a chap called Kit, who's still the owner. Uh, he started probably about four years ago or so doing pop-ups in Crooks and then pop-ups here in Walkley before becoming permanent about three and a half years ago. Um, so for anybody who doesn't really know where it is, can you kind of talk about a little bit what, where you are and kind of how it sits into like the beer scene in Sheffield? Uh, yep, yeah, we're on South Road and we're sandwiched delightfully between the Blake and the uh, Close Shop in Hallamshire, so we're on a nice little route. <laughs> um, so um, you, you can see a bit of a bottle shop and kind of a... I suppose a craft craft ale kind of micro pub. Um, can you talk about a little bit about the sort of t- type of beers you get in here and and how can you think you sit sure. up with it? See, uh, yeah, we're a, well, technically we're a shop with ancillary on sales, so not quite a, uh, a bar and not quite a, just like an off license. So probably business itself is probably split about half and half in terms of people who have beers take away and people who stop in. Uh, we've got three cask and five keg lines for the uh, for those beers, which you can also do as a takeout as well. Uh, the types of beers we have in, uh, mainly sort of modern British craft, uh, along with uh, German and Czech uh, beers. Um, most of the stock cycles around. Uh, there's only probably 10 to 20 lines that are permanent, and the rest, the other sort of 80 or so, all switch around depending on what's available, what's looking good, and what we quite want to try as well. It's not really a leading question, but is there anything you think that makes um, Walkley Beer Co. unique in the kind of area compared to your competitors? Anyone who would <laughs> uh, Probably the 
the, the sort of drinking and takeout part of it, because um, there's other good pubs in the, in the vicinity, like smell like that. Yeah, the Blake, got clothes shop in Hallamshire, Blind Monkey opened recently. Um, but probably yeah, it makes us a little bit different. It's having that uh, that takeout side to things as well. So we kind of like fit in with the sort of type of beer in the area, but also have that sort of extra element, if you like, as well. So obviously we're an audio podcast, but so to describe the place, we're not in kind of your typical um, location and sort of venue, really. Is this was this like an old flower shop, maybe, was it? Uh, yeah, well, it was a florist before we were here. It's been various other businesses through the years. But yeah, florist was the most recent one before us. Um, most of the sort of furniture-wise and things is sort of quite an ad hoc kind of uh, sort of theme, if you like. Um, as in before about being sort of a shop first and then sort of drinking in a sort of secondary part of it, if you like. So we kind of wanted to keep it looking like a shop as opposed to uh, a bar that you can also take a little bit out from. It's a little bit living roomy as well. We like yeah. to keep it sort of, without going over the top, we like it to be quite homely and quite cosy so it does sort of present the option like oh I might just stay in you know it's sort of like gives you the options of which one you want to do and making it as comfortable as we can yeah like, uh, I'd like to get three or four to take out but oh I'll just stop well, for a half yeah. as well yeah. while I'm here <laughs> that might be me <laughs> um, so uh, for example you're sat can you explain kind of what seats you're sat in at the minute uh, I'm sat on some cinema seats which I gather it may be the rumour mill but I gather these were swapped for some gin um, <laughs> and that's how we came to have them they are dangerously comfortable because they're quite low and you sink into them and yeah. you come for a half and then you leave three pints later. It's not deliberate, but it is a factor. <laughs> I think that that's a good thing. I think like if you look around, you've got the kind of German style kind of beer, the, the kind of outside long yeah, benches, tables. Um, which I would imagine kind of seats ooh, until maybe 20 people, yeah. something like that. And then there's these what is it, four cinema seats that sat on the side. And that kind of feels like that's someone waiting to take some take out that but possibly might <laughs> might stop for a bit as well yeah Slump so, uh, <laughs> i'll just have a few while i'm here it's a yeah, obviously having um, a couple of supermarkets nearby you do get quite a lot of people who are like i've just popped out to get some milk but yeah. um i may take me around <laughs> three hours to uh, again this is me there's such milk <laughs> <laughs> no like i said you've got um I was thinking about the kind of crawl around here. Like you've got the Th- you've got Thornbridge Pub, you've got the clothes shop across the road, um, you've got the Blake, which you mentioned, and now you've got the Blind Monkey, which is mm-hmm. down the road from you. And um, as someone who kind of does goes on monthly kind of crawls and tries to find a little bit of a, a route, I find that almost the Blind Monkey might be kind of just kind of um, connecting that little yeah, extra little space here. Like bridge it a little bit, if you like. Yeah, so you, um, we've already noticed since they've been open as well that we do get people who come in and maybe before they might have sort of had a, a couple in here and then before they've gone off to like another area or into town or something like that. Whereas having another couple of good pubs in the area, yeah, you do get people who will do like, yeah, a little bit of a crawl of an afternoon and evening and will stay in, in Walkley as well, which is obviously good for the area, helps with their community sort of vibe, if you like, as well. And like with people getting to know other people in the area too. It's, I think it should be, a, yeah, it's definitely a positive for you. I think the times I've been in here, I've found um, maybe just, you know, come, like I said, come for that quick drink, maybe you've gone to this, but, uh, the hazard or across the road, but you do find that it has got that kind of community feel and there's lots of people who seem to probably not know each other, but are quite happy to kind of have a chat with each other and sort of just, you know, just mull over over, over a quick drink. Yeah, I don't know if it's because it's like a bench layout or if it's because it does come across as a business that's kind of built not from scratch but kind of built very ad hoc very much something that people want to invest not just like money but invest their time in and enjoy spending time in and Walkley's got that kind of community feeling which I think this has possibly done a fair bit for like the amount of people that know each other and are great friends in here because they met on these benches but it's like me or Nick standing here when we're working by ourselves people don't walk in buy a drink and sit down generally they'll buy a drink and then they'll be like oh you know, we'll start having a chat. If they don't, we're a bit like. <coughs> <laughs> so just to, um, for people who've not been a bit, you don't, you're not, you're not open all week. So when's the best time to come down? When you open, etc. Uh, we're Thursday to Sunday. Uh, Thursdays and Sundays four till ten, and Friday and Saturdays two till ten. Uh, 
we uh, on the old social media, all Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, generally, each day we're open, we'll put up a, a picture of what we got on draft. Also, together with uh, things of any really, like new bottles and cans and lines that such as well. So you, you can keep up to date on what stock we've got, and if anything uh, floats your boat, so to say, you can pop in for a for a tipple. Uh, just finally, is there anything you got coming up in, in pipeline? Any kind of events or takeovers? Uh, yeah, next month actually on the 6th we're looking to get North Bruco um, up for a tap takeover um, which is going to be some of the taps and then a good wad of lines in the uh, in the fridges as well and so it's a bit pipeline at the minute but we're hoping to have them around as well for a bit of an informal meet the brewer, not like a talk or anything, just some people having some drinks and chatting about beer which is what happens here a lot <laughs> sounds like a very walkly kind of way of doing a, a, a takeover um thanks for your time and uh, like i said you know, I'm, I'm assuming you'll be able to find that on all the normal social media lines yeah. so. indeed always always there to search for walkley beer co and we pop up brilliant thanks for your time guys so first round we've got um belgium versus mexico Okay, so let's give James. We're not allowed to give any beer. clues on any Wonder what colour it is or the country or anything are, are like we, that. Are we, are, we, are we both poured? So pour them, pour them both first, and yeah, then decide which poured. one of them we're, you're going to give to me. I'm going to hold them now. So we're going to get one in my hand. I'm happy that there's, so happy that there's enough. Is it relevant? Yeah, no, I can. I'll mix them around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm happy there's enough. We all happy there's enough beer in each one. Yeah, yeah. So here's your first one. Tell me beer number one. Right, okay. It's in the glass. Blindly did the bite blind here. To smell like. Um, okay, I've, I've got a fair idea. This might be Mexico. <laughs> what, what would you start Could impression? Um, it's got a faint kind of you kind of urine motif going on. <laughs> <laughs> Layman's term. Actually, like smells like smells a little bit like like Foster's Rattler. Oh God, <laughs> that's not. It's like definitely that. the urine. Right? Yeah, it's got it's got a very lime kind of undercurrent to it and actually a bit of a lime kind of top layer to it as well. <laughs> is it lime? It's quite it's lime, lime layer. Layer. <laughs> he's, he's finishing it off though, he's giving a good second. It's not second unpleasant. Up. It's got a nice, it would be really nice on like a summery day that. All right, you ready for your second second beer? Yeah. Would you like some sorbet to um, cleanse the palate? <laughs> right. or that was kind spoon? of like lime sorbet. <laughs> <laughs> would you like some of the other beers to clean? This, um, yeah, it smells like it's going to be a lot richer, a lot darker. Mmm, nice. Yeah, very rich aroma going on there. Drink it. It's quite, just tastes quite boozy. You're going to guess the percentage? No, <laughs> I am going to guess that it's Belgium. Through a process of elimination, and also the <laughs> fact that it does taste a little bit Belgium-y. Belgium. Um, if that is, um, is it Belgian or Belgium? Yeah, such a thing. <laughs> it's got um, a kind of a chocolatey kind of thing going on. Is it nice, James? It's very enjoyable. If you had to rank it out of ten, ten being the best beer you've ever tried, this is not a bad way of doing it. What so. number oh. would it sit on the beer scale? The taste is not the normal kind of beer that I would go for. Although I would say that the other beer was also not the taste of the kind of beer that I would go for. In their own way, I could enjoy them both. This is so much fuller and so much richer that I would give this a seven. I'd give the other a five. Therefore, I guess by yeah. by, by press elimination, we therefore have a winner a for winner. round no. one. I'm going to polish that off. You take the black one. You enjoyed it, that, didn't you? It's quite weird doing that. Yeah. Not being able to. Um, do we do veil Mexico now? Yes. So we can now unveil yeah, Mexico. You were correct in that Belgium was the winning beer, and uh, what did you get as well? Oh, so oh, did you go? Alf, did you go so to Asda across the road? No. <laughs> Unravel the punch now. So just in the hope that you will still be this with me. After tonight, I brought a bottle oh, of yes. Amigos. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like this. Tequila. Now, 
Puerto Rico. Five point one percent. Suburbia especial. I honestly did. I have spent all month in a whole Don't range of tequila. both specialist and less specialist <laughs> beer shops. Home bargains. Attempting it's to also find two pound. <laughs> <laughs> That's the headline on the bottle. And I really did not Fantastic. want to bring Corona or Sol, and I don't know how much better this is. Even Desperados is brewed in the Netherlands. Did think, you know this? I think this is the first time I've ever seen something of the actual label have the actual UK price in the actual label. <laughs> Embedded, like, like not you like can't the sticker on it. it. Like I mean. the proper like tequila flavour beer yeah. label. Mm. Two pound. But I'm happy with a five out of ten and I am very <laughs> upset that this is all I could find. I hear that Tijuana in Mexico has a very good craft beer scene. I have done quite a bit of research. You've had a month to go there and bring something back, Laura. There's only yourself to blame. So, sorry. Does anyone else want to um, to try? In fact, I mean, is, is, is it a bit that everyone's had at some point? Anyway? I don't think I've ever yeah, had a like Desperado. Which Never had a meal. Oh, it so it, it small. smells limey. Yeah. You're drunk. <laughs> only I did smell it. I'll have this bit. Thanks, Laura. I'll try it. I'll waste a glass. For now, growing up, and I didn't like Ooh, wine. Do you know what? I like that smell. Yeah, yeah. That's what you have into. I should. I should have really. Do you know what I mean about like? It's as if they've squeezed the lime into the sunshine. It. You wouldn't be horribly offended by that. No. It's extremely chilled. That if would be someone, great. if someone didn't tell me what what drink that was, I wouldn't necessarily say it were even beer. It tastes yeah. like a shandy. That yeah. lime would have given it away. <laughs> I mean, is it quite strong as well? Five, Five point one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Adam, it's me versus you next. Oh, my old band called me versus you. Grudge, so. It's the grudge match. We'll um, Sean through. needs to don the. Um, Is that? Can you confirm you line? cannot see anything? I cannot see anything at all. I can confirm that. Coming now, aeroplane on its way. Into my right hand. Ah, uh, there it is. That's your first one. Okay. So this is Adam and James. <laughs> and put these forward. What are the two countries? Uh, Germany and Japan. This has got a sort of spicy note to it, sort of either wheaty or saison-y sort of feel. Touch of banana, maybe it's a bit of wheat in the Okay, yeah, that does have a real spiciness to it, so quite yeasty, not much hot flavour. Not the style I'm particularly fond of, but, but, but not a bad effort at that type of style. And there's your right hand. Two. Uh, this one's not that dissimilar. In a row, oh, we're about to not, not quite as much. Does that mean he's got, you have to go back to his um, spicy, almost a little bit of pepperiness on the aroma. That one's got a smoother sort of mouthfeel, smoother finish, not quite as um, not quite as bitter and spicy as the first one. So that is very close. In fact, that's softer. That second one. Can I just have one more mouthful of the first? Oh, this is a good mm. round. This is a this is really out. close, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it's got extra, extra time. time. Um, it is very close, yeah. Uh, there's one point in this. Uh, neither of them are beers that I would um, generally try and uh, seek out. So points out of 10 are not going to be sort of, I think we said 10 best beer ever, so nowhere near that in terms of me. But I can, I can, I can tell that they're both decent beers. I would give the this one I'm holding now, yeah, is that the first I'll, one. Uh, that's the first yeah. one. Yeah. yeah, I would give that a six, and I would give this one, which is the second beer I tasted, the softer one, very close, half a point in fact, five and a half. Ooh, so, that is tight. So the second one felt like um, Japan. I think the winner's Germany, just maybe. Well, that's that's what maybe you it's have that absolutely right. spot on. Yeah, it, yeah. it is <laughs> Germany through to the semi-finals. Shock. So that's me revealing um, Japan then, isn't it's it? very much Japanese. Oh. Yeah. Our, uh, penalty shoot I've had a tricky, there, yeah. a tricky month Nailed with it. Japan. I know, well, I've got family who go to oh, Japan and drink a lot in Japan, quite a lot, and I've got their opinion. And in terms of like export stuff, there isn't a hell of a lot that isn't either kind of really specific beers or like, you know, collaborations and things, but so I did I did cheat a little bit. So I did actually go to a supermarket, but it is a it is a beer that a lot of people on Twitter sort of recommended, and I did try it. I tried it with people at work, and we agreed that it was actually a decent beer. Yeah. So we've gone for the uh, it's, it's, it is a it's a, like I said it's a it's a wheat beer. Yeah. So it is like a very German style, and it's uh, the Itachino Nest from uh, is it Kuichi? Kuichi I like the way you said that. 
Um, you'll get that. Um, I got this from Waitrose. I've, I've seen it in other other um, supermarkets. Oh. It's a very pleasant beer. It's um, five point five percent. Doesn't taste five point five. No, I don't. Think. Um, it's kind of an orange coriander nutmeg kind of. I, I do see what you mean about them tasting similar. Yeah. yeah. In terms of the fact that it is very. I don't know if anybody yeah, wants that. Sort of very very sort of thing that and just a little bit. Uh, but it's a bit more yeah. gassy and a bit. More obviously, I didn't know it's what got James, the orange flavour. I don't know what James has got. I didn't. I didn't no. know. As soon as you started, you started giving the flavour profile, I was thinking this is going to be a little bit level pegging because I knew obviously. Knew uh, right, uh, game three, Adam. It's your turn to judge. Oh. And you have. I mean, I. I think this could be tricky. I'm Denmark versus Spain. Is this one where you feel confident that you'll be able to recognise the difference between um, them? I'm not sure because I'm not, I'm not sure where you've gone. You're getting a very, very good poor accent. Of one of them. <laughs> I thought you were going to comment on my accent for Andalusia there. Well, yes, no, right. very, it's very good. Andalusia, a Japanese <laughs> accent for so, so Denmark versus Spain. So far, it's the seeded teams that have gone through. I'm going to pass you one of the beers. I think from an audience reaction, it would be... Ah. I'm not going to treat I'm trying to give my nose a little bit more... Uh, Smelling room. <laughs> smelling room. Oh, that's um. It's not. It doesn't smell hoppy at all. It smells quite sweet, in fact. It smells. It's it smells like it. maybe like it could be like a milk stout or something like that. I initially thought it might be pale. I don't know why. I think. It, I can't see. I think both styles. I don't think about dark beers. It, it smells like it could be quite strong. Oh, mm. It tastes like really like syrupy, so if it doesn't taste boozy, it's nice. I don't think I could drink a hell of a lot of it though. I still can't tell whether it's like like a milk stout or whether it's like a really boozy kind of. If, if you had to go wine. for which country you think it's from, which you, which would you say? Oh, I, I need to drink other one. All right, let's uh, swap over beers. So, <laughs> oh, this one smells. Much like fresher. This is definitely pale. It smells like it could possibly be like a goza or a sour or something. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Shock James. What a relief. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna joke and say, no, it's cat piss. Right. <laughs> no, it's like it's really, um, it's really, it's not like um, it's re- it's really tart, but not in a more flavoursome way than a, than a kind of like face melting kind of way. It sounds like you've got a real contrast between those two, then. They're completely different. I can't tell at the moment whether you like either of them. No, I like them. Like... I like them both, but they're both beers that I would I would never drink a pint of. No. <laughs> no. And I think I probably struggle with an half on both of them. To be honest, because this is really this is more my style. This second one, it's actually it's not like very refreshing because it's quite quite intensely kind of what's it? It's sour. It's almost kind of just tart. Do you think weather-wise, you think maybe this would be the Australian one? I want to go this. I want to go this one's the Australian one. You're not picking. Wait, wait, you're not picking Australia. <laughs> you've got, you've got other side there, of the country Australia. there, mate. You've got Denmark and you've got Spain. <laughs> well, this one's the Spain one. Why not Australia? I don't mean that. Spain. Okay, okay. I'm going to go. This is Denmark, and I think I prefer this one. How many out of ten then? I would say that is about. I'm going to give this one a seven and a half. This is second beer. Can I try the first one again? Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm going to say maybe a six and a half to this one. It smells boozy, but it doesn't taste boozy. But I think I, if it's going to smell and taste boozy, it's, I, I kind of want a bit more from it. So I think these, number two is my favourite. You're going number two? Yeah. And you reckon that's Denmark? I think so. It's hard to tell. They're so different. You are right. It is Denmark. Denmark make it through. It's all the Cedar teams that are going through. Means I can reveal the Spain one. See, I had quite high hopes for this. It's nice. It's just, just I, yeah. I thought this was going like to be something it. quite unusual. I've obviously yeah. wrapped mine a lot better than everyone else. We can't. But that um, this one is more red in colour. Yeah. That, that taste and I were expected that, to be that more, pale, yeah, <laughs> pale colour. That pale beer you described yeah. it as. So this is uh, black block. Uh, which is Laparata, it's oh, Imperial like Stout. Laparata. And you're right, it is quite strong, it's 11.2. That is Jesus not Christ. even close to that. Percent. I had quite high hopes for this, because these kind of, the stronger stouts sometimes do I mean, quite well I, in these I, kind um, of tastes. I met things. those guys when they did, um, they were at the um, Seba BRX two, three years ago, that they're on a little stand at the um, 
guys, Sheffield. Really cool guys. I managed to find some of their stickers in my pocket in my coat about three, like, about a year and a half later. Um, they do some great, great pale stuff. You can get mm. them at tram it shop. Does, it does melt um, away in terms of strength, doesn't it? Yeah. That would taste really... anywhere close to 11. <laughs> no. No way in here. This. It's quite treacly, isn't it? Yeah, it is. On the nose. I drank this in <coughs> Brussels. There was a, a beer festival arranged by Brussels Beer Project where they invited a few breweries from sort of around the world, and these were one of them. And I was blown away by this beer. So uh, they do. Um, I feel very humbled no, no. that my Danish choice. I think, made uh, to be honest, like in opinion. hindsight, I think like it's come down to my style preference slightly. And yeah. I think I've always can champion their beers, and like I'm surprised less, more places don't do their beers. Because you know, there's a couple down the road just at, at the tram shop. There's, a, there's even a gluten free one for everybody, which is um, a really, really nice beer. Probably one of the nicest pails at that strength of about 5% or tasted. I think probably using my eyes and a bit of nice branding, good branding. Um, I think it's just more that my taste, probably this time of year, oh, uh, Russell's Polina. Do you think that tastes 11%? Yeah. <laughs> yeah <right. laughs> I'm drunk. <laughs> it's, got, it's, very, it's got kind of a licorice sort of aftertaste. It's sort mm. of clings Should we to offer it to us first for a quick taste? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So the like final that. game then is. It's quite strange it's fallen to being these two teams, actually. It's like a Commonwealth battle, isn't it? <laughs> England or England, England. Uh, against Australia. Or Australia. So this is Adam versus Battle of the Commonwealth. Shore. Adam, you considered a lot of different beers before picking the one that you went for. Yeah. And Sean, you actually did send someone to Australia to bring no, it back. No, right? he, he, he already lives in Australia, and it was just very good timing that Mark, Mark Storrs was uh, coming across to the UK um, in the last weeks. Oh, that smells really fresh. Pretty fruity. I'm going to guess this is pale. It smells quite fizzy as well. well I can feel some tension here. <laughs> yeah, I saw a slight <laughs> handshake there. I'm actually um, really worried. But... It's really powerful. Nice hoppiness to it. Lasting bit of finish. Well, which, what colour would you say it was? I'm gonna go pale, but maybe quite goldy. Golden pale. I'm thinking sort of like maybe strong IPA, potentially double IPA. Okay. Can I swap? Do you want to try the other one? Yes, please. Okay, taking one. There's the other. Mm. It smells maltier, darker. Mmm. Got a really good malty backbone to it. Tastes quite. Classic. Classic. I'm gonna guess this is England. Mm, interesting. Okay. You're pulling some quite unusual faces there. <laughs> <laughs> it's bloody difficult when you've got a blind <laughs> follow on, honestly. Can I have another one from this one, please? Is it this one? Yeah, the other ones are for, for a weight comparison. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that Laura is the best judge. Yeah. She's doing a really good she's, job of this. She's more silent than everyone else. <laughs> she's she's actually golden. thinking about it. I'm going to say, based on the fact that I think it's got a bit more going on, I'm going to give this one in my left hand a seven and a half. Okay. And I'm going to give this one a good solid six. But I think Ooh. whatever this one is, is my winner. Which do you think it is? I think it's Australia... <laughs> you've, 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 you've called it right in terms of the fact that it is Australia. It's our first upset of the tournament. Yeah, and I did, I, I, uh, although probably yeah. no great surprise, England <laughs> out in the group stage. Yeah, yeah. Well, there we go. Oh. You know, all the promise, none of the actual... Uh, would you, um, could you have a guess what a beer that is? I'm right, do you want, do you want to reveal, reveal, reveal what it is? is? This is an absolute... One of the best beers that we're going. Yeah, that's it's just controversial. It's um it's Buxton Brewery, it's a black a double black IPA battle horse. Yeah. Ten and a half percent. Interesting. No two really strong yeah. um dark beers have gone out of the first. I don't know what it is. Like, is it just is it just hard to drink blindfolded? But don't they 
<laughs> normally kind of darker beers, stouts, porters do quite well in these kind I of things. I think they're yeah, kind of, neither of them, or oh, that one certainly isn't a uh, sort of sweet imperial stout, is yeah, it? It's, it's, more, would, it's more hot wind. I would never one. usually choose a black IPA yeah, to drink. A double black IPA. <laughs> um, but Best I beer, was it? Jeez, I'm not having a taste. Yeah. I did say, I'd say it go either one of two ways. I'll either be like, Laura will be like, that is the best beer ever, or... I've not drunk it. Do you know what? This it's is my good. Se- this is my second bottle I've had that I've not drunk. The last one I had, I went out and uh, my wife drank it. And then this one I had, and I thought, do you know what? I'm going to put that one as the. Is it, uh, was it that one? That's that one's nice. It's, it's, it's a lot and fruity. But it might be quite fresher than I don't know the how Spanish old. one. It was bottled in September last year. Mm-hmm. Plenty of hops. It's, in, so it's been a bit that's, old. That just goes against it, possibly. Yeah. I think that was the right decision from me. I think I just found that the Australia one, whatever that may turn out that to be, a month ago, just, yeah. was just a little bit more complex and had a lot of freshness to it, so that's why I went for that one. We have a lot of glasses on our table now. We need to do a little bit of reorganisation, get ourselves ready for the semi-final. So, it's meet the brewer time, uh, and this is one that for me, personally, I've been really looking forward to, because way back when, my first kind of like baby steps into the world of proper beer, Thornbridge Jaipur um, was a revelation for me. It kind of started me off on that kind of beer journey. Um, and ever since then, Thornbridge has been kind of a really special brewery for me, and I'm sure lots more as well. And I still look out for their new stuff when they try it. In fact, tonight, Adam, me and you had Pineapple Halcyon yep. on keg, which we, we talked about last time on the Hotcast in Bottle. Yeah. Much better on keg. We both a really liked beer. it. It's like a different, yeah, a different beer. Um, now, I expect there's going to be people that probably kind of argue that they don't count as a local brewery or that they're a bit too big nowadays for us to be kind of featuring on, um, on, on this feature, but they kind of shaped my beer journey, so I kind of feel like without Thornbridge I might not even kind of be sat here now. So, um, A lot yeah. of our listeners will, will, will love Thornbridge as well, Jay. Yeah, yeah, so, you, you sell a lot of them in yeah, yeah. Beer Central, yeah, a lot of places that... I think as well, with, without, without Thornbridge you don't get a lot of other breweries Correct. as well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so. going to shout out some Thornbridge love as well, because I think despite the fact that they have grown massively, they're a really big player in the beer world. You know, the people that work there are absolutely brilliant. Uh, they're all really true to kind of the product that they're making as well. Um, <laughs> And yeah, I think they do great yeah, things for the beer scene. So yeah. yeah, very much we'd record when me and James went last week, and so yeah, yeah. And we we kind of claim them as one of our own. It's not quite in Sheffield. They claim themselves. Most of the, the people that work there live them. in it's Sheffield. Cool. It's like yeah, we and they've got we're, we're having them. We're having them. We like them. Fuck them. I think they claim us rather than we claim them. <laughs> so Adam, me and you went to the brewery social on Saturday, as yeah. you've probably seen on social media over the weekend. Um, I actually went along a few days before that. Uh, so have a listen to this. This is what happened when I went along to kind of meet my first true beer love. Which, by the way, when I say that, I mean Thornbridge, not James from Thornbridge, who I met up when I was there. <laughs> my name's James Buchanan. I'm the export manager here at Thornbridge Brewery. Um, James, I mean, Thornbridge is easily the biggest of the breweries that we featured on the uh, the Hotcast so far. You've just kind of given me a bit of a walk around the, the, the site. Um, there are a lot of different kind of numbers and stats and figures mm-hmm. that kind of show the scale of the operation yeah. here. Um, so just kind of fire some of those at us, because you talked a lot about kind of the amount of beer that you're producing, the, the amount that you're bottling, things like that. Yeah, so... Uh, every day, Monday to Friday, here at the Riverside Brewery. So we have two sites still. We brew at Thornbridge Hall and at the Riverside. We've been brewing since 2005 at Thornbridge Hall. Um, still brewing today, still doing four brews a week. We get about 36 casks from each brew up there. Um, and it is as busy as it's ever been, actually. It allows us to do a good amount of uh, quite seasonal cask beer, lots of fun stuff, too. Um, And then here at Riverside, we actually put the brewery in in 2009 and have since continued expanding on the brewery as well. uh, And it has grown in size over that time too. We're now doing three brews a day, Monday to Friday here. um, And so 15 brews a week and we do 50 hectolitres, 5,000 litres per brew. So quite a good amount of beer coming through. Um, And obviously your job particularly must be quite interesting because you're kind of dealing with the exporting mm-hmm. how, how does that work how far and wide do, do Thornbridge beers go 
Uh, we are in quite a good number of countries now. Um, for example, last week I was in St. Petersburg and Moscow. Um, we did a big event in St. Petersburg, met a lot of uh, beer buyers and Thornbridge fans there. And then we moved to Moscow where we were uh, presenting our beers at uh, uh, Moscow Big Craft Day, which was you know, attended by tens of thousands of people. So, you know, to be able to go to Russia or to go, you know, recently using places like Finland and France and all over, really, you can see our beer being enjoyed. So it's, you know, a great feeling for us that it's there and to see it. And uh, we have the ability to get it there in incredible condition as well. How, do, how does that work then? Because one of the things that we've talked about on the, the Hopcast before is um, kind of how quickly you need to drink a beer to get it in kind of its, its best its best state, depending on what, what kind of beer it is that, that you've yeah. got. Preparing something to travel those those miles must be a, a heck of a task. Yeah, uh, so we work, um, the customers we work with, we use refrigerated containers, so they'll be picking up uh, and ensuring that the beer stays at a stable temperature throughout, particularly if we're sending you know, to Asia or thailand for example places like that we want to make sure it's in good condition the whole way um but also and you know i'm lucky in my job really because the brewers here just they really know their stuff um they've been brewing for many years uh they've got the skills to be able to produce not just um classic styles but new all sorts of funky styles as well uh, and do them to such a, a good standard that I'm, I'm very confident you know when we're selling our beer out to people um, I can explain to them and say, okay, it's going to have this flavor profile. It's going to be like this, and it'll turn up, uh, and it will. You know, in drinking it in Australia, New Zealand, across Europe, you do really see that it is the same product as well. Um, I think th- most people recognize Thornbridge as being, you know, certainly one of the first in terms of what we kind of call craft yeah. breweries. Um, do you have days where you just kind of stop and think, Jesus, how did this get so big? Uh, yeah, I suppose. I mean... I think it's been a steady expansion. Uh, you know, it's been 13 years now, and um, we've always wanted to. We've never wanted to, you know, brew so much beer and then suddenly try and sell it on that. We've always steadily worked to a point where we know that we have customers in place. We know we have opportunities ahead of us, and then we can expand and grow into that as well. So having that steady expansion it has really helped us and got us to this stage. But I suppose sensibly, maybe we're at it. And what about the the future? What what, what kind of the plans from from here on for, for Thornbridge? Uh, I mean, you'll see certainly continued steady expansion as well. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, more bottle, more keg, but of course more cask beer as well. Um, we do while we have our core products and we do have a good range of core beers in all those formats. We will certainly be doing some fun and exciting beers too. So. Um, you know, we're going to be seeing beers from the Hall Brewery where there's lots of different casks and we do a cask year of beer where we produce different beers every month. Uh, we do a keg year of beer where, again, we're brewing those. So we've got a Czech Pilsner coming out at the start of next month, which will be a nice limited release beer. Perfect for actually the summer we're surprisingly having at the moment. Um, so, yeah, it'll be a real mix of things, actually, and you will see all over. We uh, have been doing a lot more mini casks, discovery packs, which are eight packs with a variety of different styles in and actually help to kind of, you know, give a feel for different styles. So there's a vice beer, a coconut chocolate porter, a Hellas lager, uh, Jaipur, of course, in there too, and others. So um, about educating and getting people to know different styles and maybe try beers that they haven't before. Um, I was going to ask about that, actually, because obviously the... Um the, the kind of discovery pack that's uh, is that the one that's on sale in Tesco yes, now? Yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously kind of supermarket sales, that side mm. of retail has become a much bigger thing over the last few years most yeah. supermarkets seem to stop Thornbridge yeah. now. Um, how, how do you guys kind of make that balance between the stuff that, that is being sold on a wide scale and mm. still producing the kind of the smaller scale the, the strange beers uh, and obviously you do the, the year of, of beer and some of yeah. those are quite <clears throat> kind of small scale. Personally mm-hmm. I'd have loved Tullamine to last the mean to the entire yeah, year because oh, I thought I, I, you peaked way too soon there <laughs> um, but um, yeah I mean how, how how do you kind of draw that line and make that balance I, I mean it is a bit tricky of course you know we're always working to do that we do need those core beers available and that is something we're, we're always very aware of not uh, just for supermarkets but you know for bars for restaurants for uh, again internationally you know we have such a demand for beers like Jaipur and Lucas and Zara um, but you do need to be able to do those styles I mean you know we looked in the barrel room earlier and uh, we've got a lot of space now dedicated to beers that are going to take two years in some cases to be ready as well so 
it's not just planning you know a week or two ahead we're looking well into the future and we're making sure that these beers are coming through uh, and that we are suiting all sort of range of styles but doing them very well at the same time do you kind of worry that um maybe some of your kind of long-standing customers might start mm. thinking oh they've sold out a little bit now they're, they're putting everything in supermarkets uh i'd hope not again for us it's it is quality you know that's really what we're looking for so we um any expansion we're doing and things quality is always always at the focus of it so um, you and i walked through the laboratory earlier here at the brewery and just the attention to detail i mean it blows my mind sometimes when the brewers are sitting there and they're working on all the tests and and just ensuring that quality in every product so um, we will hit their specifications for it, but it's also going to be an exciting beer at the same time. So even still now, you know, brewing big beers like Halcyon, it's been around a long time, but if you give it to someone who's not tried it before, um, they're certainly going to be enjoying it. So I think even with with some of our older beers, we do still really get that hit for it. And, and uh, yeah, hopefully people are going to keep enjoying them, especially with the new beers and things that we're bringing through too. Well, obviously, we're about halfway through the kind of the year of, of, of beer yeah. now. Um, give us a couple of um, clues, things, things that are coming up that you're really excited about. Uh, so we're going to have quite a, actually looking ahead, we're going to have beers uh, like Tap It, which is a chocolate orange stout. So that's going to be one I think will be really fun to do. Um, we'll do a smoked box, and we've played around with smoked box in the past and it's a style that um, almost uh, the last one we did someone described as having like a bacon sandwich like and it's that real a uh, nice feel uh, the mouth feel is there it's so full full of flavor so that's going to be one that um, yeah I think those two particularly will be quite interesting I mentioned the Czech Pilsner but again that's going to be just perfect for this weather we'll do a farm ale sale just to follow up afterwards um so we're keeping that summer very nice traditional styles but they're going to go down really easily in the summer we just did eyeball which is a summer vice as well so uh that i went out the door very fast actually so yeah i know it's being enjoyed at the moment um actually in other places around europe too um what kind of process do you use to make the decision about kind of the the, the ones that you do that are kind of mm. the one-offs yeah some of them tend to kind of come back as kind of core range beers or, yeah. or make another appearance. How do you... Uh, you can probably tell where I'm going with this because <laughs> yeah. I mentioned this particular beer that I was a big fan of. Um, how, how do you kind of go about deciding what is going to make another appearance? Um, to be honest, a lot of it's popularity. You know, if we sell a beer and it, um, we produce it, we make it, we start talking to people about it and they come back and they're saying, we want more, we want more, then, you know, we, we'll certainly start looking at our options with doing that. Uh, Coco Wonderland's a good example. You know, originally we brewed it with uh, the chocolate shop in Sheffield on Exor Road. Um, the two ladies from there came out, we brewed the beer together. Um, and really from there, it started out as just a small cask brew and has steadily just increased in popularity. Um, again, I, like I said, when we were in Russia last week and it was hugely popular there, Finland. So a couple of the sort of more northern places, we've really seen a good popularity for that one, but uh, across the board. and. Um, so when a beer has that reaction and people just keep coming back and are like, wow, like this is fantastic, we need more, then we'll always try and work it out. And Tulamine actually did get that reaction. So I'm hopeful myself that we can try and work that one back in. So, Literally yeah. have my fingers crossed as yeah, we, uh, yeah, as we speak. Um, obviously, the other big thing for, mm. for Thornbridge that's coming up is Peak Ender, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is a, well, a relatively long-running event now. Yeah. Um, for anyone that maybe doesn't know about that, just kind mm -hmm. of tell us a bit about it. Sure. So Peak Ender is going to be the 17th to the 19th of August this year. Um, we're going to have just a huge mix of things. It takes place in Bakewell Showground. Um, so we're going to have some of the, really for us, we think some of the best breweries uh, in the UK are going to be coming up. They're going to be pouring their beers. We'll be organizing events with the guys who are coming up. So we'll do meet the brewers, tutored tastings, things like that. Um, it is family friendly. We're going to make sure there's kids activities going on too. There's going to be bands playing throughout and there's going to be a huge amount of different food trucks as well. So a lot of local guys coming up. Um, and they're going to be bringing their food. So we'll make sure there's a good range to suit everyone. And, you know, really, you're in the heart of the Peak District at that point. Like, you're able to um, drink all the beers there, but also go on walks around Monsell Head and all the beautiful areas that we have here. So I think just for the scenery alone, it's, it really makes it a unique weekend. So. And for a proper beer enthusiast, I mean, the lineup of breweries that you've got involved over that weekend is, it, is pretty yeah. much second to none, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the breweries that we have on there, and we know they're going to be bringing some really special beers as well. So personally, I'm pretty excited to, uh, you know, sit down in, again in the Peak District, enjoy a nice beer or two myself. So yeah, that's going to be great. 
And if anyone's um, wanting to get all the tickets or a bit more information on that, what should they do? Yeah, so hit us up on our website, which is just peakender.co.uk. Uh, make your way there. All your tickets can be com- uh, bought through there, and you're able to check out all the food I mentioned, and especially all the beer too. Brilliant. James, thank you very much. Thank you for your time, Great. and thanks for the tour today. Cheers. Thank you. A huge thank you then to uh, Thornbridge, who took uh, good care of uh, me and Adam the other day, showed us around the brewery. It is an, um, uh, just, I mean, it's like the scale of that thing yeah. there is amazing. I think they were saying that they probably make about 75,000 pints a day there now. Um, That's astonishing. Which is, a lot of, I say a lot of is automated. They've still got the Thornbridge Hall running, which is, uh, which is it Thorn? I can't yeah, Thornbridge Hall is kind of yeah the old. Took us round. He said he's still he's still getting the mash done. He's still digging stuff out. But um, yeah, incredible operation they've got there. The the equipment and the the attention to details incredible. You know, very much kind of sticking to their core cask beers um, in terms of like their main things, which means that they're going to be doing a lot of cask still. Um, you know, supplying the local area, which they always wanted to make sure they do. And then, and then everyone else is a bit of a bonus, really. But yeah, yeah. brilliant. Really enjoyed it. Cool. Right, it's semi-final time. Um, now we are now off the hook. We don't have to do any more. Do we allow? It now falls down to well, in a bit the final, which will be all down to Russ, um, who's transferred to the cinema seats, which you heard about earlier on. By the way, you know the people that. Um, that swapped those for what was it a bottle of gin does that mean there's a cinema somewhere that's got some seats missing but someone that's just really <laughs> just <laughs> sat on the floor that's drinking a bottle of gin that's, that's I possibly. think it's more the um, the universal currency of uh, of elder female antiques dealers is gin is gin <laughs> <laughs> really. makes sense you don't bother turning up your money you, just bring gin you've probably worked out that our judges for the semi-finals are Nick and Lucy from Walkley Beer Co um, now, obviously, you've, you've listened through the first round, so you've heard some descriptions. You'll probably be able to figure out quite quickly which beer is, is which, but that's all right. So you're kind of judging this on kind of a combination of which you think is the, the better beer and which you just prefer. So kind of marry those two together and you'll, you'll just know. You'll just know. Um, Nick, do you want to go first? Sure. Do you want to don the blindfold? Indeed. Can you guess from the aroma which country it is? I can't, to be honest. I don't think it's Belgium. It doesn't. Uh, what are you getting from it's it? Not, uh, it's not dark enough to be Belgium, or probably not Denmark on that basis. Either. Was Denmark a dark one? No, it's no, Germany. Sorry, Spain was the. It's Germany. You've got Germany. Germany and Belgium. Germany. Probably Germany is one of them. Can I try the other one? It's just. Um, I'll give you the other hand if you want it. So what are you getting from the yeah, second beer? Some, it smells a lot darker. Or, yeah, sort of uh, maybe raisins in the notes there. Smells stronger as well. That's only been kind of on the nose. That's the smell so far. So, so here we go with the uh, all important tasting. By the way, it's quite funny watching people drink beer when they're blindfolded because they nearly miss <laughs> yeah, their mouth every time. That. It's <laughs> great. I'm I'm it's so really good it it You have no idea how full the glass is. So you don't want to just like <laughs> tip it straight back and just cover yourself in beer. Covered his face. Or like, yeah, or the <laughs> other side of it is you kind of like trying to take a sip up to the air for about three times. <laughs> we should do that. We should do that with Russ when he's doing the finals. Give him like <laughs> give him a cup of water. So or just an empty glass and just be there for ages. Just try and tip the weight off it slightly with your hands. So what are you getting from the first? So this is beer number one. What you're getting from that now? So yeah, that, that tastes sort of wheat beerish in terms of the uh, sort of texture and the sort of um, the little bit of kind of sort of sour funkiness you get on a wheat beer sometimes. If that makes sense. Keep hold, keep hold that beer, and I'll pass you in your other hand. I'm going to give you the uh, number two again. Where is the in the room? It's confused. I am totally confused the, the, now. The, 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 the disorientation. The sight, the sight sense really, oh, really, really yeah. plays with the senses, doesn't it? Tipping the second one up, when you get more aroma like up to you, it smells different, so actually just sticking your nose in. That one, the second one, sorry, tastes, yeah. That's really odd. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it was the expectation of the smell that, like, threw it. So which, um, which, which right. are you thinking is which? Indeed. So the first one's definitely a dark one now, actually. Ah, that's, tight. that's really odd. I think it might have been the expectation of thinking, expecting what you're going to smell, expecting you, what you're going to taste. It's in terms of like... I, and I, then, yeah. So what do you actually prefer? Which thing's better beer? 
If we were to fill that, refill those glasses, which one do you want to drink? The second one is more quaffable in terms of sitting there having a couple of like, two or three of them. The first one's probably more complex, more uh, some more to it. I'm sure, which how that makes each one a better beer because we've obviously got. Uh, if you could never drink, if you could only drink one ever again. I'm going to go with beer number one. Beer number the, one. Uh, the winner. This one here. Would, would you would like to predict which that one is before you take your blindfold off? Yeah, from the from the taste, like I said, totally sort of reversed. So I think it might have been sort of thinking too much and expecting to say something. I think that's going to be the darker of the two. Which is the... The Belgian, wasn't it? That was that's the correct. One. Yeah, it's for one. Belgian food's yeah. the final. Sean, weird, yeah. Sean totally has his first finalist. Oh. Uh, yeah. If it's Sean, well, it's Sean later, the Sean. final. Nick, have a small thing. Incidentally, that means we can now reveal what the, uh, yeah. the German beer yeah. is. And uh, in a way, I'm sort of relieved this didn't make it's it through to the final and didn't win because I thought I might be accused of some cheating because it's actually oh, yeah. a collaboration beer, uh, which I did check the fridge earlier because you did have this a couple of weeks ago when I was here. And thankfully, uh, uh, I like that beer as well. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is uh, do you know how to pronounce the name of the brewery because it's got a lot of uh, letters in Vian it. Which, Stefano. Vian Stefano. Yeah. Stefano. Vian Stefano with uh, is it Sierra Nevada that they did it with? Oh, right. So it's a uh, collaboration uh, beer. And yeah, I had one a couple of weeks ago, really liked it, so I thought I'm going to enter this and just see what happens. Mm-hmm. So if anyone wants to uh, try it before so we do. Is it style? Is it, are they just sticking to the. It's a Hefeweizen, so, but it's, I think with the Sierra Nevada side of it, they probably hopped it a bit yeah. as well. Cool. Be interesting to taste. The reason I picked that one over the uh, with the Itticino Nest yeah. in the first bit was I thought then it's got more bitterness yeah, to it. Yeah, it could be seen in Nevada's influence. It's got um, real body to it, hasn't it? It's got yeah, a, it's got a, definitely got more a, body than well, the yeah. 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 You get that banana bubblegum thing. You know, you get that. But well, it, if anybody's thinking about getting something that's probably available, um, talk about Thornbridge again. Thornbridge Versa is back out in bottles. Oh uh, <coughs> yeah, that's and, um, one of my favourite beers. It's a, a beer that I've not drunk for a long, a, a long time, a few years. Next time you're in Adam, what what sort of Versa are at? Yeah, mate, I love it. Yeah, it's really good. I remember like, but yeah, that's like a, a vice beer, vice versa. I think that's where the name comes from. Um, pick one of those yeah. up if that's quite clever. I didn't realise that. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. similar. Semi final yeah. number two. So Lucy, this is over to you. Do the blindfold. Uh, you've probably figured out by now that you've got Australia and Denmark. Sean, how confident are you of an all Sean final? Um, He's got I, a semi I'm, on. I'm, I'm not sure on Lucy's preference. What, what, which styles do you prefer generally? Lucy, if you're going to grab something you're, from your fridge now, what would you be getting? Um, I like really deep, spicy reds. Not mad on sort of big citrusy yeah, hops, yeah. so I don't know how Australia's uh, going to go, so we'll see. Be <laughs> okay, here is beer number one. Do you get any smell from that? This, this is a real hushed kind of mm. nervous it's silence going on here. I was, just, I was just smelling the can, I couldn't really smell anything from it, if I'm honest. Yeah, it's very rich, it's got quite a nice, like, big malt kick in the back. Still some, some, still some nice big punchy hops in it, of course. And that <laughs> is beer number two. Getting quite a big fruit punch from that, quite a lot of fruit to it from the smell. And there's some sourness. <laughs> <laughs> Strange it's had the same reaction from both people that have tried it. I generally like a sour, but I'm much keener on like just straightforward sours, not sort of fruity ones. Okay. So it's was a slight surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you know which is which? Mm. I think we've got Aussie the first one. So which one do you prefer? I'm trying not to be prejudiced because fruit sours aren't no, 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 it's trying to say which is the better taste, beer. Like. About, yeah. Well, say so if you go back to it, if you would have a, a big glass of one of those, which would yeah. you... Uh, yeah, if we said right. Or you which would you, you never have again? One or the other. Which is it going to be? If you're going to drink, any, if you had one beer, you're going to drink on a desert island for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> These are the choices. No what, 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 I'm probably <laughs> that or salt water. At the behest of probably no, I'm making this an all shore final. I think I'm going for this one. Which is the um, Australian. <laughs> it is Australian. <laughs> Australia oh, yeah. with. So let's oh, reveal yeah. the Danish beer. So I had a lot of fun picking a Danish beer. Um, I didn't know whether to go for something a bit 
more unusual. Like I've been really enjoying flying couch beers. Uh, they've been making some really good IPAs and you don't see as much of them around. But in the end, I was just like, which one do I want to drink the most? You know when you said, it smells like there's a lot of fruit in it? Well, there's a ton of raspberries. Oh, it's a ah, it's a from oh, Tall. It's, uh, it's an 8.5% Berliner Weiss, that's which is a uh, yeah, typical Australian. That's, that's beautiful. Probably beautiful. the strongest Berliner Weiss beer in the world. Yeah. <laughs> Just by sniffing it, this would be my winner. This would be uh, right. You don't, it's it's the um, it's the beer World Cup. What we've not done really yet is talk a little bit about the actual football World Cup that's um, that's coming up. So we were thinking a bit about if you quite like good beer and you also quite like football, where can you go and get both those things together? So um, I went along and caught up with Al, who's doing something a little bit unusual for football fans. I'm Al, uh, Al Dorn. I'm uh, bringing the World Cup to Avondale Picture House. Now that's a good statement, bringing the World Cup to Overdale <laughs> Picture House. Put a bit of, of meat on the bones of, uh, of what that means. Um, yeah, so it's uh, obviously it's the World Cup and the idea is to uh, transform uh, the venue uh, in Sheffield into a World Cup festival. So because the World Cup's in Russia, uh, it's called Kickoff um, and it's an immersive uh, World Cup experience. Right, immersive World Cup experience sounds um, amazing. Uh, what yeah. what does that entail? Uh, entails um, all sorts, really. So there's lots of uh, communist-inspired sort of uh, visuals and all our artwork on some of the uh, projections and uh, kind of imagery in and around the venue, how it's lit, uh, even down to some of the uh, the sounds and stuff. Um, we're going to try and have like uh, sort of Russian, uh, you know, maybe like uh, Lenin, or so, you know, like speeches and things like that, right. uh, kind of on loops and stuff. And then um, in terms of the the immersive like festival elements, so we've got loads of different content, I guess, or features, whatever you want to call them. So we've got uh, outside, we've got like a terrace in the car park, which is um, not to watch a game, but uh, it's a craft beer bar and we've got. Uh, beer from Bavaria, they've got Swiss beer especially as well, um, coming from the uh, the same brewery, um, they're helping us source it. And then we've got the usual stuff like table football, um, we've got beer pong tournament, we've got FIFA, uh, World Cup special, uh, we've got comedy, um, we've got some uh, different comedians um, coming and doing different things, so one of them is like a superstar Soviet soccer quiz I think he's called it and that's um, going to be integrated in uh, sort of live you know the game and, and elements of the game and asking questions on uh, on that and the World Cup um, I'm trying to think what else uh, yeah there's live music so there's bands so the first game um, this is pending but I think there's, uh, there's a Russian or Ukrainian band called East is East on the first game, the World Cup opening party uh, for the um, mega game between Russia and Saudi Arabia. Uh, that's the first <laughs> game, <laughs> so that's going to be interesting. And then um, we've got a band called the Ukrainians playing on one of the match days. Another um, Ukrainian band, presumably <laughs> from. There is a language barrier when I'm talking to them, so I think they're from Ukraine. Um, and they're banging to football, so they're, they're coming down and I think they're playing uh, before and uh, in between and after a couple of the matches. Um, but we've got a whole programme, basically, for the whole thing. Mega long answer to that question. That no, sounds good. The, um, certainly some of the bands sound probably better than some of the matches, to be honest, <laughs> yeah. the, the Russia-Saudi Arabia one. Yeah. Um, obviously, from, from our point of view, our particular interest is, is in kind of the beer side yes. of it because, um, you know, it's our World Cup um, beer episode. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and we kind of slightly bemoan the fact that there are a, a huge number of places where you can drink what we'd class as you know, quite good beer and right. watch football. It, it tends yeah. to be... Um, and I, I want to say it without kind of offending anyone, but you know, the, certain venues that, that show football are probably not the kind of places that you go to, to yeah. have a really good beer. Yeah. Um, so, is is this going to get over that that barrier? 
Hopefully. Um, obviously, there's a lot of testing. Um, it is uh, a pop-up, so um, it's only on for the best part of a month. Um, but I did do this uh, not in a, a theatre, um, but on uh, a roundabout in Old Street in London four years ago. And I worked with the same uh, brewer, and it was really well received, and the atmosphere wasn't like a typical pub. That wasn't really the idea. The idea was that it was super accessible. And all the fans from, you know, Paul and the international teams could come and um, that kind of backfired sometimes because Ghana, uh, for religious reasons or because they just didn't want to buy any beer, didn't drink anything. Um, but, but yeah, the craft beer, um, it'll be mainly more craft lager type, you know, more sort of um, cask rather than uh, keg. Um, rather than, sorry, yeah, sorry, keg rather than cask. Um, so rather than uh, hand pulled, but um, there'll be at least one hand pulled, and then I think there's about four or five different beers from And Union, which are from Bavaria, which is was just brilliant about four years ago, and they've introduced a couple more. Got an IPA, I think called Sunday. It's like a session IPA, and a Steph Weiss, like a white beer, um, but a bit more sort of easy than something like uh, Delirium. It's like a sort of lighter version of that. Right. And then, what else have they got? They've got, um, I think there's a pale ale that we've got on draft and an unfiltered lager as well, which is um, really nice. And then, yeah, hoping for a couple of um, guest ales as well locally. Um, but I'm waiting to hear from them. Um, I, I'm kind of guessing that probably quite a few people that are listening to this w- were maybe here for the Indie Beer Feast a couple of months yeah. ago and maybe know the venue. But yeah. for anyone that, that, that doesn't, it is quite a, a grand venue, yeah. quite a spectacular venue. Yeah. Um, I can't imagine there's going to be many more spectacular places to watch the, the World Cup this summer. No, that's it. I mean, I think um, obviously it's a huge venue and, you know, in the winter it gets quite cold but with it being in the summer even if it's raining obviously people can come inside if it's too hot outside then it should be nice and cool um but we have got the car park as well and and our bar uh, on most match days is actually going to be outside um it's due to licensing but it's also we've got a purpose-built bar with eight taps uh you know full cooling system and everything um so it should be uh it'll be nice to have a beer outside that's decent decent beer and be able to come in and watch the game um are you doing it for every game pretty much um unfortunately the people of sheffield keep getting married so there's um, <laughs> i think there's three weddings in between um us hiring the space um but we've pretty much i think there's a there's a couple that we've quite happily dodged um i think like south korea against uh, another sort of minnow but um, but pretty much we've got we've got 18 match days at the World Cup so we are um, you know we're committed to screening all the teams and some of the lesser games it's not all about England you know usually um, it's about you know let's beat everybody but hopefully the idea is that people can come and it's a friendly atmosphere and um, the, the idea came from being in Berlin going to the World Cup there and their sort of outdoor tea garden kind of tea garden kind of setups where they had really good German beer, um, no animosity, free to get in, good vibes. And um, I went with two friends, all German fans, about 500, uh, and me and two friends, and we were, it, we enjoyed it so much. Swapped shirts with a guy behind. He's actually come in from Munich. This is from you know eight years ago, and he's coming especially uh, wow. here. So I'm looking forward to having a few beers with him. That's amazing. That's yeah, brilliant. Yeah, which, yeah. which game is he coming for? Um, presumably Germany, but hopefully we don't draw Germany because it was <laughs> when we lost something like five two or something, right. uh, and the town, the city of Berlin was going crazy, and it was sort of like, okay, yeah, we've, you just thrashed us. Um, but yeah, no, he's coming all the way from Munich, I think, for that. So that'll be Titus. He's called. So that'll be cool. Um, anyone that kind of wants to find out any more, where can they do it? And, and does it work whereby you just, just come along? You can, you can just come along. I think, obviously, the venue's pretty big, uh, inside and outside. We've got space, but um, we are shouting about it uh, across every channel possible. Um, so it's, it is free to get in, but if you do want to sort of guarantee 
to get in and uh, get on the mailing list then you can go through tickets for good and there's tickets there it's all free you don't have to pay um, but it just guarantees entry in terms of seating it's first come first serve we're actually trying to do uh, a certain area where it's all standing because we want to make sure that the atmosphere isn't like a, a cinema which is in the dark <laughs> and everyone's sat down um, so yeah hoping it'll be a bit more vibrant than that and uh, one last question Alan this is the big one who's going to win it? Tunisia <laughs> <laughs> no I don't know um, I, th- I think um, England was so bad last time um, and I had such high hopes for them um, with a business half depending on it um, where now I just think it would be great if England can get through the group but I think I don't know I, you know what I might go for Belgium I think that's my pick yeah okay, I'm going Panama or Croatia there you go because I got them in the work sweepstakes oh, right, so okay. <laughs> it's good a reason yeah. uh, Al thank you for your time alright cheers thanks very much so thank you to Al. Good to hear about what's going on at Abbeydale Picture House. We are going to mention uh, a few of the places that we know that definitely sell good beer and are definitely showing the World Cup games. So honourable mentions, uh, Clubhouse, the New Barrack Tavern, uh, Common Room, uh, the Riverside down at Kelm Island. The Greystones apparently showing some of the World Cup games as well. And we've just learnt that the Devonshire Cats are going to be showing some of the World Cup games as well. Sean's also in... in we'll have them radio in our shop. Sean's got them in the radio on Radio Central. On, on Radio what, X. Evening, TV open in the evening oh, for no, the, no, the England one. Well. Pretty, yeah, com- the afternoon game. Pretty yeah. confident the uh, Wise would have put I, I, have, I, have it on down there. Um, yeah. they're, they're the ones that have told us that they're definitely, uh, definitely doing it. Uh, right, it is final time. Uh, Russ. Come on, Russ. Uh, I mean, you're kind of, it's almost like super sub because you've been a little bit kind of like in the uh, background, in the background tonight, yeah. until this moment. Um, now, you've obviously heard what everyone said. There's a decent chance you'll be able to figure out which is which. How do you feel about it? So I'm we know sure it's, there's yeah. one that's kind of a bit darker, there's one that's a bit hoppier. Well, what, I, didn't, I didn't remember that, but what's, thanks for what's, your, what's, what's, what's your initial thoughts in terms of what's more your style? Uh, so for people who don't know, my style is normally quite light and pale um, on the whole, but it, it can change. I'm not... I'm not adverse to anything else. I always try them, so it's, it's, it's still fairly open. Right, are you ready for beer number one? I think so. There it is. Right, I think I can remember which one that one was. Before you get it from that, that's... Maltiness. Lots of maltiness. Is that a good thing for a cask um, kind of guy? No, it's not the worst thing in the world. It would be for some people. Are you allowed to remind me what the teams were in the final? Uh, you, well, yeah, um, so you've got Belgium and you've got oh, Australia. Oh, right, so is this the Belgian beer? I don't know, is it? Well, fuck. What, what are you doing? Does that if taste Australia like? are making a beer that tastes like this, I reckon there's something wrong. Oh, so what, what are you getting from? Are you getting dark, light? Yeah, very much dark. It's quite tasty, actually. I will drink that. Not too much of it, mind you. Um, yeah, just very dark. Beer number two? How, what do you get from the nose on that one? Not too much. Sniffing the hell out of it. <laughs> Quite pale. I mean, in terms of ABV, taking a sip of both, a dark one does taste stronger and it's sitting quite heavy. A little taste of the Australian. Of the Australian one, I'm guessing that's the Australian well, I, think, I think you've. Um, you've yeah. You, 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 Have I guessed right in terms of. That yeah. Number one is the. Um, is the Belgian beer and number two is the Australian beer. Right. So in terms of, well, let's go back to the uh, desert island. If you were to um, have one, I'll only have one again. I, I, in your I life. mean, I think the worthy finalists. It's you saying that to the wrong people because the, 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 the heat three out. of me, Laura, and <laughs> yeah. Adam yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's all a fix. He runs a flipping beer shop. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I can see why they've been put through to final. I mean, n- neither are the best beer I've ever tasted, nor the worst. Yes, we Come on. Come on. Come on, Russ. <laughs> Five seconds or we're going to the fourth official. Sure. Here right, OK, <laughs> OK, I've, I've, I've got <laughs> some. Let's, let's, do let's do this properly. On, I'm, I'm generally Russ. stuck, actually. The Come winner yes. of the inaugural <laughs> Sheffield Hopcast Beer World Cup is... That one. The Australian. It's Australia. Australia. Yeah, Ooh. if I had wow. to, if I had a gun to my head. Australia he took a gun to his head. How better place. He's gone Australia. Can yeah. I also Can just we... say how I think 
Ross is the winner of the evening for being, I think, the only person to put the blindfold on the right way up. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's the one to put it on the wrong way up. He had it that yeah. way up. Yeah, that's for your nose, isn't it? Yeah, it's the nose, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, whatever. Anyway. We've got Australia. Australia's been... Come on, Sean. Yeah. Come on in. Come on Talk. in. Where's your, where's your celebratory speech? I just want to know about this both where's beers. Your, where's yeah. your... Uh, oh, we're generally your, quite hard, beers, actually. To talk, talk us through the two beers, then. Well, okay, yeah. The Obviously, the runner-up first. The runner-up first. So the Belgian beer tells about this. Um, that looks quite crap. It was, was, crap was, was my it was my favourite of uh, of these. So this is Brewery Distrus uh, uh, from uh, from Belgium. It's an absolute world leading classic. Uh, it's a 2016 version of their Imperial Stout Black Albert, uh, uh, and is is just a, a phenomenal beer. Uh, uh, just have that Belgian characteristic, but it's a it's a big stout. Distinctively uh, Belgian. R- r- yeah. But to uh, r- what percentage was it? Thirteen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I I, I, I taste the thirteen percent. I don't think it tasted thirteen no, percent. It, it tasted it, boozy but it yeah. but it wasn't. So the more important reveal then, the the beer that's actually won the Beer World Cup, which is probably the only thing that Australia are going to win this year, let's be fair. Despite uh, they didn't the do very well at Eurovision, they're not the going to win the actual World Cup. Yeah, despite the fact that both me and, and Deborah own a, a beer shop, I have two people to thank uh, uh, for these two beers. Um, uh, that particular beer, Black Albert, uh, was bought uh, for me by a customer of ours, Mark Sewell. Um, he saw that I'd had one of those when we went to Bruges uh, last um, October, because of course I posted it on social media, he spotted it on there, and he um, saw that Archer Road Beer Stop, Dave at Archer Road Beer Stop, had got some Black Albert in about uh, four, six weeks ago. So Mark uh, checked that uh, I might want another, of course I did, and so Mark Sewell should be thanked uh, for, for grabbing me that from Archer Road. The winner. Uh, is uh, a can, so the, the Black Albert is a, a bottle of course. This is Kaiju Beer, Kaiju Brewery from Australia. Not a brewery I know a, a great deal about, I'd never heard of them until uh, Mark Stores, uh, the guy who I know has the bar in, in Melbourne, brought this across, handed it to me just over a week ago, and this is uh, Aftermath Double IPA. Um, this scores 98 on rate beer uh, out of 100 and so uh, I was confident it was going to be a good double IPA. I've obviously not had it before, there was just one can so I saved it for, uh, for our event. So you um, didn't, you, you not tested it before? I've, I've actually, never so. had it before, I've, I've never heard of that beer before, I handed it to me just over a week ago. If you're honest then, which of your two tonight, which were you most confident about? Uh, I was most confident about Black Albert, yeah. uh, that's a legendary beer, a uh, rate beer 100 beer, and uh, it's a beer that I, I adore as well. I love, I love IPAs and double IPAs, this is more an old school double IPA, there was bitterness, Lucy mentioned a bit of maltiness when she was uh, tasting it in the semi-final, which was bang right. It's not a juice fest. It's a proper old school double IPA. 9.1%. Uh, yeah, it do, does not taste Again, like 9.1%. I think, I think we've all said that tonight, haven't we? Mm. Tasting blind d- doesn't help you guess the strength particularly well. You can pick up all the other characteristics from the beer, yeah. but the strength tends to be a, a, a more of an issue. We've all guessed a little bit wrong on that one. So of the two, I thought Black Albert would win. But uh, the uh, the fresh the fresh can from Australia it was canned on the twenty eighth of April so that's very rare for very something fresh, to be yeah. so fresh into into the UK so uh, I I gave Mark a, a a verdant track and field in exchange for this perhaps <laughs> I I, uh, I owe him another one next time I uh, I see him do we all know what kaiju means it's a very um, do you know what kaiju means yeah. Well, it's, kaiju it's, it's Japanese word for like big oversized monster. Godzilla's a kaiju. Oh, it's, right. it's, yeah. quite, it's, it's, it's very old school. Hence, the, hence the characters yeah. on the front. That's I much not, prefer an old school dipper there. I think it? that's not that dissimilar to um, I'm, I'm, um, kind of a human cannon, human yeah, cannonball. Yeah, human. That, that would be yeah, the closest. It's very similar to that. It's very, it kind of feels like it, it takes me back to when I would drinking the human cannibal years and years ago. Yeah. It feels like not had anything like in that kind of style for a while. Yeah, it's a, it's a, um, a West Coast double line mm, yeah. Yeah. style. I think it when nice. it, once he gets over kind of the 8%, I think, he gets that kind of, st- when it starts to taste a bit, kind of 
kind of full bodied and you're getting to that sort of stage but it drinks really well for that strength and um, uh, right so it's about time for us to wrap up for tonight normally we do our beer of the night with the ones that we've tasted so instead what I thought we'd do is just each do we think the right beer won and if not which beer do we think should have won I think um, you know, going, th- going back through the other beers me and um, Laura have just mixed um, a bit of Denmark and the UK. It, I'm going to be honest, it wasn't as good as I think you oh, think it no, was. No, no, <laughs> no. It was all right. It's it was good. just a bit. It was. Well, I'm going to speak to. I'm going to speak to shit, mate. I'm going to speak to Abbey. I'm going to speak to and we'll see. Yeah, it wasn't good. Um, I'll kick us off then. Um, I actually think that it's probably a worthy winner for Australia. My favourite has got to be Denmark which Denmark. which you know I, I'm big into um, Sours in terms of who I think will win the World Cup uh, I've got a feeling it might well be our runner up tonight actually I think Belgium might just do it I think um, on beer I think probably Belgium now taking the mask off giving all the senses back um, all pretty good beers not really, even the Amigos have surprised me a little bit but, um, <laughs> in terms of football I don't know, I think maybe probably it's going to be Germany again, I think. Uh, I think the Australia beer was excellent. Um, I agree though, I think we had a really good selection. Um, the Black Albert I've not tried before and I thought it was fantastic. Uh, but I think I probably would go uh, Australia as a worthy winner. Um, in terms of football, oh God, I genuinely yeah. have no idea. England. Piketty. Yeah. England. <laughs> Go with Panama. Uh, Nigeria. <laughs> Got a nice kit. France and France are in it. France are in it. France are in it. You're a quick man, me question it this time. Um, obviously, I thought the Australian one was probably the best one to win, so we'll stick with that. But is that just because out of the final or no. all the way around? Would you have still gone with that one? Yeah, I think okay. so. Yeah. I mean, we had some. I, I did. It's basically I, a very fair winner in, yeah, in, in all regards. The only one that I thought was probably left field for myself was I didn't mind the 2L raspberry one for a sour. I, I don't particularly like sours, but I could have drunk that. So for something different. Uh, in terms of football, in proper football, uh, I think Brazil this year. Or maybe Argentina. I want Messi. I just want Messi to win one. <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> he's really good. <laughs> he's not won one yet. Um, Barnsley can't win it, Sean. So well, it. yeah. We're, we're <laughs> like, we're, we've got plenty of ex players in the England we side, are, of course. Yeah. So our, uh, um, uh, I think uh, as have blades. We're, we're the <laughs> finalists. Uh, the um, the aftermath double IPA from Kaiju uh, won a silver medal in the Craft Beer Awards 2017. I would think they'll be more happy to find out tomorrow that won a, a gold medal uh, from Sheffield <laughs> Sheffield Hock. <laughs> They've won Donkey. They, 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 over there. They, they have won it. They'll be very excited. The guys out there tomorrow, I'm sure well, they will. Well, shippers all over there. We'll do it. And exclusive for stuff. the the real World Cup, I will be shouting for Belgium as well. Mm. Yeah, mm. definitely Belgium. There we go. That's not necessarily based on intelligence, just a soft spot for the country as a whole and uh, anyone but... And they're strong beers. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, I um, hope you enjoyed it. A little bit different for what we would normally do on the, uh, on the Hotcast, but um, yeah, I've enjoyed that tonight. I think that's been really Back good. to normal next month. Lots yeah, of beers. Yeah. Back to normal next month. And um, yeah, I mean, well, I think will the World Cup be done by the time we do the next hot cast? I don't think it will. Oh, actually. I think it'll still be semi-finals. Yet it'll to still play, be. Yeah. So we'll, we'll review. We'll review our predictions one month from now. Yeah.